and we're recording. <clears throat> Hi, everyone. Welcome. My name is David Vaughn, and this is the very first show of 2016 for Now What? What's Next? The show where we talk about what's going on and what to do to get you out of your own way and get you unstuck from those situations you don't think are possible to get out of. And today's topic building your audience with leverage. Hashtag is in WWN talk. If you tweet it out, tell a little bird. And thanks a lot for being here. I appreciate it. So one of the things that I, this is one of the areas that I really wanted to talk about. Um, it, it's really one of the first topics to come up. Uh, even today, I see a lot of um, entrepreneurs, small business owners, people trying to start out, people who have been in business for a while. Uh, it really doesn't play prejudice to anybody, but they consistently seem to struggle with uh, finding their audience, building their audience, uh, which helps build their brand. Um, and I see a lot of bad information going about uh, that. I feel this is just, you know what, this, this justifies it a little bit is to help out with uh, helping to build your brand. So, uh, you know, the first question is, uh, I'm a pop in there and you can answer this as you want is, do you struggle with building your business, with building your list um, today? And if so, put in the comments, you know, what are some of the struggles that you come along and have discovered and, and what are you struggling with when it comes to it? Um, and in fact, you know what I'm asked the question, are you wondering what in the world leverage has to do? What am I going to leverage uh, when building my business? So let's go ahead and get into that while you guys percolate over that. And replay viewers, uh, you're welcome to comment in this as well. Um, leverage. Well, so here's the thing. Everything starts out, business or life, with the same concept as an idea in our head. And it's hard enough getting up the the gumption getting up the um getting up the the nerve getting getting the way that you're going uh two guys welcome thank you very much for being here um getting uh, getting getting started getting it from out of our head and into uh an actionable process and in business this is especially true uh, I mean, every entrepreneur, every small business owner that I've run across has come out, you know, I've got a dream to quote Martin Luther King. I've got this great idea. Uh, Craig, welcome. Very, thank you very much for being in. Um, uh, you know, I, I, this doesn't seem to be, I, there's a way to do this better. Uh, you know, I think this could be done differently. I think this could help out these other people if it was just done like this, whatever that idea is. And so the process of beginning the journey of building your business and putting it in motion begins. But for a lot of people, and I, so, you know, I'm in my mid forties, I've come from the corporate world. Uh, I, you know, so I grew up, the mentality was, uh, you go to school, you go to college, you get a degree, you get a job, you work nine to five, uh, you pay your dues. Um, and then, uh, you know, one day you might be able to retire. Uh, hopefully you've got some savings built up somewhere or you might get Social Security. Ha ha. Um, uh, you know, those different types of things. So it wasn't ingrained as as much as it is with today's younger generation, the millennials and and younger and and the, the Z generation or whatever it is out there, uh, you know, to actually just go out and, you know, say to heck with it. I don't want to work for somebody else. I want to go do this on my own. I want to help people on my own. Um, that's not the way it was when I grew up. So the thought and the notion of being able to start a business was, you know, scary, very scary. And it should be scary to anybody. I mean, it's a frightening, frightening thing. Um, but, uh, you know, we seem to think for whatever reason that it's been brought along that we have to go at it alone. 
you know, it's it's that, you know, you tell your friends, you tell your family, uh, you tell your coworkers, you tell your colleagues, uh, you tell people at your knitting class, your Bible study, whatever it is. And then after that, and everybody's like, yeah, that's a great idea. I think you're going to be wonderful at it. And after all that euphoria is done and over, it's like the high is missing. The high is just gone. It's like, OK, now what? What's next? And so you start the process of trying to build your business. All right. So then you start listening to everybody else. Right. So, oh, well, what do I need? Oh, I need a website. I need a Facebook fan page. I need a Google Plus. I got to be on LinkedIn. I got to update my profile. I got to be on Twitter and YouTube videos and Vimeo and and all this different type of stuff. And you get start getting cut up. And then you what happens? You start doing the videos. You start putting up the stuff on the Facebook fan page. Uh, you get on Blab and you do Blabs. Uh, you you build the website and, and you go get an email service provider so you can build your list and you get the big goose egg. Of response. Nobody joins. Nobody, uh, you know, uh, you uh, you press refresh on your email list because you've told your email service provider, I want to know every time somebody joins up with my list, right? And you just sit there and hit refresh and refresh and refresh and nothing. And it's a big black mass void. It sucks the life out of you. You get discouraged. You get frustrated. Am I hitting on any kind of topics here? It, uh, you know, does this re resonate with anybody? Let me know in the, the comments by all means. Um, but it, it, it sounds familiar. <laughs> it does sound familiar. Um, you know, it's that big black emptiness and you're left alone because you've put yourself there alone and you don't know what to do and all of a sudden crickets exactly and even you know what i <laughs> i've seen it i've started out myself the crickets even left it was just nothing and it's like well maybe i'm doing it wrong maybe this isn't a good idea maybe i don't no that's not it okay it's hard to garner attention it's hard to gain awareness and it's hard for you to start getting that message out there it's hard to do it and again, for some reason, somewhere, some, and I haven't found it yet, but I know it exists because I've heard it myself inside my head. Well, you got to do this by yourself. So let's look at the reasons why we think we might have to do it, go at it alone. We might have to, you know, we can, we can go and sit there and say, okay, this person says I need a website. We can go out and we can look for that. We can find that information all day long. But as to what it is for, what do I do with the website? How should the website look, uh, you know, and all this type of stuff. We don't do anything about that. But let's look at what some of the reasons are that people don't, uh, uh, you know, th they choose to go at it alone. All right. Um, so let's tackle the real big one first that I've heard. And I've heard it a few times this week. Um, the first thing is I'm copying somebody. The first thing is. I, you know, that that's the first thing I'm, I'm afraid that I'll be, I, you know, I, I don't want to seem like I'm copying this individual, you know, that's in your field, that's in your niche, that's in this remote area of what it is that you want to do that seems to be similar. Uh, I'm a life coach and this other person's a great life coach. Um, and, and, you know, I, I, I might be copying or something like that. Um, pride is the next big one. And sometimes that actually goes first. It's like if I have to. If I can't do this by myself, I'm a failure. And that's just foolish. Um, it's, it, it, it's, it's, it's copying, it's pride. Uh, what else? What else could be the reasons out there that you might choose to go at it alone? Let me know in the comments if you've got a way. Uh, you know what? Because I don't have all the answers. Uh, let me look at this real quick. So not true, though. It takes a certain amount of momentum before people start to take notice. You are absolutely right. It does take some momentum uh, to garner that awareness, to uh, to to get that uh, attention going uh, so that people can see it. Cost. OK, cost. Um, I, I'm not sure how cost might um well, let's see. So cost, uh, uh, like a coach or something of that nature. Um, not everyone has the skill sets. Exactly right. Exactly right. Um, but building your audience with leverage, uh, you know, getting out in front of people, um, 
getting the message heard so that the message can start to be uh, spread so that me people can start to become familiar with you. Um, I, you know, that, that, that's just, well, if you've never done it before, if you're terribly shy or something like that, yeah, I can actually see where that would do. Um, describe my concept. I must have come in after this. So the concept's coming along. Um, a little sip of drink. So here's the thing. And then I'm open up the seat so people can come in and, and you can uh, give uh, your insight as well. Um, when you don't have to go at it alone. Okay. It's hard to find your audience. It's hard to get that momentum going. It's hard to get people aware of you and why you do what you do and how you do it and what it will do for them to make their lives better. It's hard to do it and you don't have to do it alone. You can leverage. Uh, this was said by someone that's, uh, you know, smarter than I am. Uh, in a better way, I've, I've said it, it, but he came up with the word leverage. If you don't have your own audience, go and find someone that um, go and find someone that does in your field that you respect, that you that you uh, value, to use a word I hate to use, and leverage them. Now, that doesn't mean go copyright them. That doesn't mean plagiarize them. That doesn't, uh, not copyright, but that doesn't mean copy them or plagiarize. It doesn't mean try and steal their clients away. What it means is that you need to um, go to them and ask. Go into their events that they have and interact with the audience and provide your viewpoints. Um, agree with, uh, you know, what they're saying or, or that type of stuff. That's how you can begin the leverage process. But then once you start that, reach out to the these people and say, hey, listen, you know, I really admire you for what you do. Um, I admire the fact that, you know, I... I I'd like, I value the fact that you have such an audience that they value that your opinion. I'm just starting out or I've been working on this a while, but I seem to be struggling and I, I don't want to do my community. See, again, this isn't for you. It's for your, the people that you serve. It's for your community. It's for your audience. And you don't want to rob your audience of the potential help that you can do because you haven't taken it upon yourself to move along. Um, so let me read up on this real quick. Uh, so we learn as we go along. We do learn as we go along. Um, I always sit there and tell people that successes are the experience of the failures that we have. Um, so you're absolutely right and that easy and it can really knock the wind out of your sails. Absolutely. Um, I'm definitely in that place though. It's starting to get better. Good. Uh, the real challenge for me is knowing what the steps should be and how to gauge your milestones and success steps, hanging out on blabs and help people. That's been helping me build an audience. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's exactly what I'm talking about right there is the fact that if you do exactly those things and talking about what the steps should be and how to gauge your milestones and your success steps, um, we can get into that a little bit. Um, I, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and uh, unlock the seat. So the seat's open if anybody does want to hop in. Uh, <clears throat> and I've got my earphones in. So, whoa. And I'm about to break my thing. Hold on one second. I see you trying to come. Uh, there we go. Maybe. So we got Nathan Siegel coming in. Nathan, welcome. Okay, hey, mate. How are you? I'm good. Uh-oh. Let me change something real quick. I thought I had done that, but I haven't. Uh, Did you break something or almost break something? No, I want to. There we go. Put it through my headphones. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The so th there's no echo that comes back, although I've got a really good setup. So this microphone actually won't pick up the surrounding speakers and everything. But anyway, Blab is a particularly funny beast sometimes. Uh, so Nathan, I, you know what? It's good to see you. I just saw you. Gosh, it was on a Blab, I think, uh, with Jonathan. Trip the other Jonathan day. Jonathan Trip, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I've been getting around. I've been on all sorts of labs. Jonathan's invited Good. me to his a few times and been on there and a whole bunch of other ones too. Good. Good. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I guess my first question to you is going to be, uh, you know, have you been going at it alone and, and, 
and feeling like, uh, you know, reaching out for help, reaching out for assistance might be a bad thing to do. I guess it's really the easiest, you know, I could come up with all sorts of colorful oh words. <laughs> I'll gladly uh, take any assistance that comes my way. Actually, what I've been doing is I've been asking for assistance. I've been talking to people because I, I have a very big goal. And because of the nature of the goal, it's it's something that I, I can't do myself. I can be the holder of the frequency, if you will, the holder of the vision yep. and the director and all this sort of stuff. And ultimately, maybe one, well, one of the speakers when the event happens. But ultimately, that light is going to be shone on a whole bunch of different people. Yeah. So what I'm doing is, uh, among other things, is wanting to build a mastermind of people to work with me to make this thing happen. And I have to learn about sponsorship and uh, and possibly crowdfunding. And so one of the things that happened is I, I joined, uh, well, it I was looking for prosperity stuff. Okay. And I found it on a particular site. And then I just started, and then they had a, a this, um, they had this free coaching offer and, and I took them up on it and became really friendly with one of the coaches. And then he helped me with a couple of things. And then, and all of a sudden I wound up with two fans out of Australia to do with what I'm doing. Good. And I've already interviewed one of the coaches last Sunday on a, on a Google Hangout. And I hope to be interviewing the principal of the company this weekend if I if I can pull it off. Nice, nice. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's happening. They really like what I'm doing. The the challenge is to build the momentum that I need to get it to take off. And and you know, to prove the point of what this whole topic is about, you've leveraged. You, yes. You've reached out. You you talk to a coach, and 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 you know sometimes we do it, and we do it unco- a lot of times we do it, and we do it unconsciously, um, or we don't think of it as leveraging. We go to a networking event or uh, uh, some kind of um, gathering or something of that nature, or even a blab or or you're online or something, and uh, you know we begin talking with people, and a, a bond starts to form. And then from that bond, yeah. you you move on, and and all of a sudden you've got exactly what it is, and that's all that leveraging is. But when yeah, you it, when I say the word leverage a lot of times without that context behind it, a lot of people are like, well, "You mean I need to use their audience?" <laughs> I'm like, "Well, no, that's not really what I mean at all." But that's it, where we tend to go. It it might might be partly that. I mean, just being on here, you just reminded me of two things that I very much need to do this week because. Mm-hmm. In the event, I've uh, slated that there are three major groups of people that I want to be working with. Well, I've already found the first group, and the two other groups are out there, but I haven't approached them yet. And I'm going, why haven't I done that? I need to do that. So first thing tomorrow morning, that will be on my agenda is to reach out to these two. And of those two, uh, one of them is a guy by the name of Sean Aker. He wrote The Happiness Advantage, and he has a... He has a, a protege, and I interviewed his protege about a year or two ago. Uh-huh. And it's like, ah, I need to reach back and talk to these guys and say, this is what I'm doing. What do you think? And and see, I'd, I have no idea what I'm doing, see. That's a, that's a, right. the real big deal about this thing is I haven't got the slightest clue. I mean, I've done events, but for like 30, 40 people at a time. But this particular one at least the opening night, I'm shooting for a thousand. So, well, you know what? And, and that's okay. See that, that, that whole starts to go into the whole psyche um, at pride and ego is that it's okay that you don't know that you're in unfamiliar territory. And the fact that you are, and that you're continuing along and that mm-hmm. you're, you're uncomfortable. That's, oh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Trust me. It, <clears throat> it's, um, if you're not super uncomfortable, uh, then you're not doing it right. Uh, you know, you've got to stay super uncomfortable because it, it being uncomfortable initiates uh, a whole bunch of actions and feelings and and firing neurons inside our head and everything of that nature. And and that's OK. So, I you know, I, and the fact that uh, you're you're reaching out to people. That's good. Mm-hmm. I, I would take it. And I think you mentioned it, but I'm not sure if, if I heard it right. So I'll, I'll say it anyway. Um, another way is to not only to reach out to people, but to connect people. Yes. Um, you know, yes. say, Hey, listen, I know this guy and I know this guy or this girl or, or this woman or whatever, not to be gender specific, but you know, you two 
I, I think you would benefit from each other. So I'm going to introduce you. Um, yeah. And that's the whole thing that I'm talking about with my community, my audience. When I do go out and look for help from my mentors, uh, the people that I admire, the people that I look up to, and that, that constantly grows, is I'm not going to take what I learn and just bottle it all up in my own and, and, and hide them away. I will also make sure that there's a way that people can understand that, you know, hey, listen, this person's here and they're wonderful. And this is why, because there are things that they do that are different from me. And my community would benefit from them as well. So for me not to provide that resource to my community would be me robbing my community in a selfish way. And that's the yeah. whole negative impact that we don't want to have. That'll snowball you. That'll kill you off in a heartbeat. And, and that's really the last thing that you want to do. Yeah. There's, there's, is, there's no question that there's a lot I, I need to learn. There's uh, I haven't been doing this for very long. Uh, when did I set my goal? Like middle of December, I think. And, thanks for being here, Jason. Yeah, go yeah, ahead. So I was just telling them thanks. Yeah, no problem. Um, yeah, when I when I saw the title of your event, I thought, "Ooh, I need to drop in on that." I well, need I to appreciate find you out what's here. going on. Yeah, my pleasure. And and this event, this blab. Um, so I started. Now, what what's next? Uh, last year, I did a few episodes playing around. Blab was in still in early stages and stuff. Um, and I said, you know, I, I want to continue this because it's topics that seem very relevant on very different things. Um, mm -hmm. And this is the first one. And this one came about today because I was on, uh, in fact, I was on a blab with Jonathan uh, and I was talking about leveraging and somebody goes, well, how do you leverage? <laughs> and I said, you know what? I'll do it. And unfortunately that person's not here now, but that's okay. They can catch the recording. I'll make sure that they see that. Um, Tiffany, who's in the room. Uh, Tiffany and I met on a blab uh, that was done by Coach Jenny, uh, and she came in and I gave her some um, harsh advice. Um, Ooh. That you know, it was stuff that, and, and and she'll tell you that I told her, "Don't tell me I don't know that what I'm saying is not scaring the hell out of you." But that's okay. Just do it. Keep going, and you'll be fine. And uh, see, she's giving me props. <laughs> yeah, I see that. Okay, okay, you obviously did something right. Um, yeah, this, this, like I said, this whole thing is new, but it was interesting when I posted on this one thing earlier and the guy said, oh, great. You're saying that you don't know. Here's, here's a referral to somebody who you should contact who might be able to help you. Mm -hmm. And I'm going, great. That's what I want. That's what I'm asking for. So just, I've been posting all over the place. Good. And one of the things I'm doing is putting it out there in such a way that there's no way in hell I can back out of it. Yeah. Absolutely. If you you know what I mean, make it actionable. If you put dates to it, um, I have. It, then yeah, dates are committable. Um, yep. You know, it's all part of the. It's like setting the alarm in the morning. I, I I tell people that don't set an alarm or have the alarm right next to them, or they have it and they hit the snooze. I'm like, hmm. if you hit the snooze on your alarm, you're actually, unfortunately, you're 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 killing a commitment right there before your day even begins because you committed the night before to get up at that time, just get up and go. Um, I, you know, trust me, I've got family, I've got kids, I've had very late nights, very early mornings. Uh, I've worked in the entertainment industry and had calls come for one thirty in the morning and you have to get up and go. Mm -hmm. It is what it is. You just, you, you need to get up and you need to do it. So um, the other thing about leveraging though, is that you need to make sure um, that whoever you're trying to leverage and cause there's a lot of noise. So unfortunately you have to start sifting. True. From the noise. True. But the other thing about it is that these people that you find, you need, it, I'm not saying instantly turn them off, but you need to listen to the fact with, you know, okay, does this apply to me? With it, I usually tell people two questions, you know, what is this person saying and what is this person saying to me? And mm. if I can, if I can relevate those two questions and answer them and they work in, then I start listening a little bit more. But if this person's just, if, if all of a sudden, because there's always the facade, um, I, I, I tell people all the time, you can't hide asshole. 
Um, and there's a lot of assholes out there. There's a lot of people who don't know. There's a lot of people who all they're doing it for is money. They're not very successful. Um, I, you know, but unfortunately we get caught up into that. And if you stay in that path too long, then what happens is it just takes away from you being able to find somebody else. Um, and so a lot of times people are like, well, you know, then how do I find the right people to look to? And I'm like, well, then you leverage people, other people you ask. Yeah. We just seem to be afraid to ask a lot of times because again, it's, it's, I, you know, if I, if I ask, I'm a failure. If I'm, if I ask, I don't know what to do. If I, you know, why would anybody pay attention to me if I don't know what to do? Well, you know, nobody sat there and drove the car the moment they came out, you know, and they had to learn. You didn't walk first. You crawled. It's a process. So. Yeah. And part of the challenge is the vision of it, holding, holding on to that, uh, noticing some of the changes as I go along. The, the how is what hangs me up big time. Mm -hmm. Because there's some things that I want to do now, and it's I haven't got the slightest idea how I'm going to get there. So I, when you're doing that, um, and this is a little off topic, but I, it's all based off of goals. Yeah. Um, so I teach how to do goals different than most everybody else. I teach what's called reverse goal planning. Um, hmm. it, it's a mindset. Okay. And it's, uh, so let's take the beginning. Uh, let's take 2016, for instance. So there's been a ton over the past month alone, even the past week of people uh, talking about 2016 and what are your goals and what are you going to do? And, and, you know, this is what all this type of stuff. And they always start from the facing the goal. So that actually presents a negative start. Hmm. You know, because okay. your goal is this huge mountain. Okay, so you need to get to the top of the mountain. Well, you're down at the base. And everybody always does the same thing. All right, how do I get up there? Huh. If you take it in your head and, and you do it at the end. So what I do is I've, I've taught people, I said, okay, it's December 31st, 2016. And I, I ask them what their goals are. Okay, so, you know, what are your goals? Uh, but I have them personalize it. So, uh, you know, I always hear, um, I make six figures. Okay. Uh -huh. So you made a hundred thousand dollars. That's great. That's not personalized. What did you do? What did that hundred thousand dollars allow you to do? And I make them dig deep into it. I'm like, all right. So you went on a two week vacation that you've never done in the last five years. Um, uh, you quit your day job, uh, you know, whatever these little things are. I'm like, okay, so now you're personalizing this. Now you can feel it. You've done it. You're there. Now you just turn around and look at how you got here. And mm -hmm. it's easier for us to go backwards. Let's go. Okay. Because then what happens is we don't have that huge looming black cloud of goal. <laughs> it's, kind of, it's kind of funny about it because I can see what the event looks like. I can see where it is. I can see some of the people there. Um, the actual structure of it, that's the easy part. The, the challenge for me is is mostly financial, raising the funds, finding sponsors. That's stuff I've never done before. So I'm way out of my element on that. But in terms of actually organizing an event and running it, I already know how to do that. And partly because I ran a, a conversational Spanish group for four years. I started it from zero, mm -hmm. built it to a community of hundreds of people, all with free advertising over a period of years. I advertised it every single week for two years, and then I stopped. Yep. And then it just kept growing and so, without any effort on my part. So if your particular issue is this particular event and, it, yeah. and, and the, the, so then my question would be to you, uh, has anybody else done an event of this size? It, it, it's not, uh, you know, it could be a cupcake cooking event. Sure, I, you know, it sure doesn't matter enough. what it is, but I, you know, it, it's not the, the name or the, the context of the actual event. It's has somebody done the event. Sure. I've actually been to them. Okay. All right. So then what you do is you figure, out, than me. you figure out who was, uh, who was in charge of it, you know, and you huh. start going, I, you know, Hey, listen, I, I, I've been to your events. I really like your events. And, and the reason that you want to do that is, is one, hopefully it's heartfelt. Um, but you, we enjoy it. You know, we, uh, we enjoy the fact that we get props 
from people about what it is that we do. Um, bye, Tiffany. Uh, she already left, but um, yeah. So we enjoy the fact that we, we get props. You know, uh, yeah. when somebody tells me something, I'm humbled and I'm honored, literally. And I, I really, and, and, and so it's always going to make me open up more than, um, uh, you know, just straight out, hey, how'd you do your event? I, you know, so we all like to be made to feel good. Um, that's really, that's a really useful tip, though. It's something I never even thought about. Uh, there are a few hey, Greg, welcome. events that I've done over the years, and hmm, it never so occurred you, to me to look for the organizers who actually did it. Yeah. And what um, they did and how they did it. I, you know, I've, I've been to plenty of events. I've, I've, I've worked in plenty of events of various nature, um, nothing of huge magnitude, but I know people that have. Um, and, and, you know, I don't know the first thing about them, but if hmm. I was going to try and pull something off, then I would. Now, the other thing that you need to make sure that you do is set up, and I don't know if you've done it. I, I'm sure you've set a goal of getting this event off, um, mm -hmm. and, and, and successful, but I would challenge you to, to break it out. So I, it, it's break not, it yeah, so mean? you take the event. So again, let's go back to a dollar figure. Um, sure. Uh, so people are like, um, they're launching a course. And so, uh, you know, they don't work, you know, well, I'd like to make some money. Uh, you know, I, I hope this really, I, I'm like, okay. Um, and and the way it usually comes about is they don't know what to charge for the course. So this is, uh, you know, so the same type of thing. So, uh, you know, I say, okay, what is it that you would like, to, you know, to make? Uh, and I haven't come up with three numbers. I haven't come up with a low number. You know, well, I need, I, you know, I would really need to make this in order for me to continue to do it. Um, I would be very happy and comfortable with this, a middle number. And mm -hmm. then what's your hairy, scary number? So just take your event, remove the money and make an event and say, okay, I'd like to have, you know, I would really like to have this type of event, this, you know, and it's a low event. So it's, it's a lot smaller, um, but I feel that it would be worth the time of the people that are attending, that they would get the value out of it. Um, I, you know, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. And then say, I, you know, this is a comfortable event. I, this is really the direction that I like it to go. And then what's the hairy, scary? See, it sounds to me like you're on the hairy, scary end of the event scale. Yeah, that, and, that wasn't that wasn't actually my idea. One of my friends said to me, no, you, what you're thinking of is too small. You need to go larger scale. And I just went, OK, well, I, just, I didn't argue with my the just reason said, that I tell people to come out with a set of three is so that it's more manageable. Okay. Right. Uh, we always want to shoot for the hairy scary, but it's kind of like um, weight loss. Uh, most people, uh, you know, are getting healthy, uh, you know, I'm 50 pounds overweight. I need to lose 50 pounds. And then when I don't lose, uh, you know, when I, I don't lose 50 pounds as quick as I am, I feel like I'm a failure. Um, I, right. You know, it, it's right. more than just the, the pounds coming off or it's uh, the, the scale going down. It's it's the the waist size becoming a more manageable size. You know, the belt loops don't get hugged as quite as tight. Uh, you know, uh, I'm standing up stronger. I'm able to walk farther. I, you know, it's all these little different types of things. So you need to take that same approach with what you're doing, which may sound a little difficult. Um and, and honestly, I, you know, I've never done it, but we could sit there and certainly try and plan it out. Um, it is well, one, one thing you said that really got my attention. I've been writing right notes in a notepad <laughs> here. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm hoping you wouldn't hear That's it okay. anyway. That's fine. Um, I'm just, uh, I've just been writing d down things, but the number one thing that you said to me, the big takeaway is, find event organizers to model Absolutely. people who have done. Because what I guarantee what you'll find is that event didn't start off at that size. I have yet defined. No. That's not true. I can name one event that did start off at the exuberant size that the organi the, the founder of it, the organizer, whatever, uh, wanted it to be, and it failed miserably. Uh, it went on for two years. It was a huge financial burden and he didn't go anywhere. Um, and, and the reason is, is that he didn't know what he was doing. Um, 
and, and you know, so it just happened. So I do know of at least one event that started off at a very grand scale um, and failed. Um, and that's not to say that other events haven't. Um, and the, the sad thing is he didn't continue. Uh, you know, just because you fail doesn't mean stop. Sure. It just means go back to the drawing board. It's those holes that it's success is based well, off of experience of our failures. Yeah, the reason that somebody p pitched it to me with the idea of going for a, a larger size event is to help to pay for all these workshops and different things that mm -hmm. are going on. And that's Thanks, part of the reason why it came about, because I was actually planning to do something with smaller mm -hmm. scale, which is what I had in mind. And then it was like, no, you should go. Well, and that's probably where you're comfortable again. And, and, and so you've, you've got to make sure that you're keeping yourself in the uncomfortable area. Um, so, uh, you know, again, mm -hmm. I'll sit there and I'll come back with when we going back to launching a course and the money and I'm like, okay, here's, you know, I, I want that hairy, scary number because they're uncomfortable. And to be honest, they're really uncomfortable with that middle number. They're okay with try, you know, yeah. so that's where the difference between a 47 or a $27 course and a 547 or $2,000 course, or I've seen them higher. I, you know, yeah. that's where that whole yeah, these process comes are from is based off of comfort. And, and, and what it does is it helps you make sure that you're delivering all that your community is looking to receive. Um, you could also sit there and look into not only, so I would recommend talking to organizers of events um, and seeing what the steps mm -hmm. are that they did. I, and I, I admire uh, you for doing it. And I'm, I plan to try and follow your progress the, all the, all the way through. Um, but you can sure. also, um, I would engage the target audience. Uh, I would go ahead and begin yeah. doing that and help have them help you help themselves. That's part of my challenge. Actually. <laughs> that's, well, that's part of my challenge. I mean, in terms of this one group of people that I'm working with, uh, the outfit out of Australia, they already have the audience. Okay. And a big chunk of what they are doing is also a big chunk of what I okay. want to do. So there, there are three major groups. There's the NLP group, there's the Byron Katie group, and there's the uh, Sean Acre Happiness Advantage mm -hmm. group. And all of them have useful knowledge that I want all these participants to have because when they have it, they'll be able to have a, a more rounded approach when, when helping people. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I really like what you said about finding event organizers. Sure. And I also need to reach out to these other two parties and say, look, this is what I'm planning. It, the funny thing about this is that I was hoping to get a better handle on it. But when I called the hotel to talk to them, they said, oh, you're way too early. You need to call us in six months. Well, we that, and, and so that, but just take that and, and, and say, OK, thank you. Um, and, and have that marked on your calendar. Six months from the date yeah. is when you need to do it. There you've got a you know, now you've got that. That was step. 5,001 out of 2 million. Um, and, and you still got to deal with other, the other 499,000 uh, uh, or 4,999 steps before that. Uh, and you haven't done that, but that's good. So you've gotten that out of the way, you know, Oh, you're calling me way too early. Okay, good. Um, but that also I was may really be, surprised. Um, sure. I, you know, the other thing I would recommend is maybe calling another venue, another hotel and, and sitting there and seeing what they say. Um, just so this is where I'd really like to have it. This is where I, another place I'd like to have it. I'd be okay with having it here. You know, if you chunk it out, then you've got your options set up because mm -hmm. trust me, things happen during events. Um, I worked, um, I worked close. Well, actually, I, so I was a participant in an event, um, that a friend of mine, uh, was building up. Uh, it was a new venture, mm -hmm. uh, the company that he worked for JD events out of New York. Um, and it was a new leg that they were trying to do. So he had been traveling all over the country, uh, for the year prior, uh, to all these other shows, getting people like me, um, to, uh, either mm -hmm. be a sponsor or to be a, uh, booth 
uh, or something of that nature to contribute to it. Done all this great stuff. The event comes up, Hurricane Sandy comes along. The warehouse oh, where uh, everybody's uh, booth stuff was stored prior because it, it was in New York and in New York, uh, they have the union. So you can't do anything <laughs> without them doing it. And it, um, and it became the emergency. Hurricane shelter, right? No, it didn't. Become, it became a, a, a pool. Uh, basically, it was, you know, but things oh. happen. I mean, I, you know, now that's force majeure. That's an extreme event right there. But I've seen it where um, hotel rooms had set the hotels that said, yeah, we'll we'll block off this floor uh, for attendees. And then that didn't happen that, you know, all these different things that can happen. So you need to have all these contentions in your place. And, I, you know, I again, I'm just speaking off of the top of my head and what I could, those organizers can definitely, definitely help you do it. And I think you'll find out that there's, they had, you know, as they went along over the years, they got a team <laughs> because it's too much. Actually, to part of what's going, part of what's going on is I don't want to make the same mistake as a friend of mine who I knew was very sick when he was working on this event. And I was thinking, Bill, you're out of your friggin' mind to do this. I mean, he was dealing with a serious problem, uh, health mm -hmm. issue. I'm thinking, you keep this up, man. There's an excellent chance you're going to fall on your face. Well, he did one week before the event, and he was a key person, and he didn't have backup, and the entire thing collapsed. Yeah. And I've been seeing the the fallout of it. I didn't know that it happened because I left that city like a year and some mm -hmm. ago. But I'd been following him, and then I realized, hey, I haven't heard from him in a while. What's going on? And then I spoke to one of my buddies and said, oh, and he told me, I went, oh, my God. He's a really sweet guy, but he, but again, he was doing it all himself, and that was a major mistake. And I'm determined not to make that mistake. I know yeah. better. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard. In fact, I yeah. know uh, a couple people right now, and and they're trying to do um, summits or events or or whatever it is you want to call it, and they're at the very early stage. And I'm I'm sitting there, and I'm like, that's a lot of work. <laughs> it's a huge amount of work and you're trying to do it by yourself. No, 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 no. no. Um, well, it's amazing. It, it, but then again, it comes back to what you were saying earlier, the whole idea about having to, to do it all by yourself. And the idea that if you ask for help, you're, cons you are a failure. And, and these are, oh, yeah, I, these are valid things to say. I mean, I mean, I, you're dead on target with that. One of the, because a lot of people feel that if they ask for help, they're a failure. Well, it, it, they're a failure or uh, they're it, typically it's all based in either, uh, you know, well, it's all based in, in fear. Uh, and I've even yes. heard, you know, I don't want to sit there and say anything to anybody else because I'm, a, you know, basically they're afraid that somebody else is going to steal it and get to it first. Um Oh, I've seen man, that with, you know, yeah, oh yeah, well, it's not really scarcity. It's just more that if I'm not there first and, and I give people, yeah. uh, you know, lots of different examples of where I've not been first and I didn't, and I learned a long time ago, being first doesn't mean being the best. And it doesn't mean that it's Actually, serving your community uh, the way that it should. Um, uh, you know, so if somebody else comes out with something first, by all means, let them do it. I'm going to come out when I'm ready, when I know the community's ready to receive what it is that I have to provide. For what it's worth, like when I was running my Spanish group, but yeah, I, I created the group. And I had a number of people come to me at different points during the group and say, I don't like what you're doing. And I'm going, fine, start your own group. And they did. And in every single case, the group's bombed. Yeah. Every single case. And it wasn't that I was doing anything fancy, except that there were certain things that I was doing, which as far as I could tell, which made me a success. And one of them is that I was consistent. I did it every single week. And once I figured out what, what I wanted as far as the community was concerned, I kept asking my, uh, some of my closest uh, friends. And finally, they looked at me and said, look, it's your group. What do you want? And I told them, and they said, great. And there were only three things that I wanted. It was really clear. And after that, no more problems. There were people who came in to try and poach it and this and that, and I had to boot mm -hmm. them. Okay. That's just the way it goes. But other than that, it was it was pretty straightforward. I, I just knew what to do after that. It was relatively easy. And in terms of running an event like this, the actual running of it, I'm not worried about that yeah. at all. Good. Not at all. Not the slightest bit, even at a thousand, because I know that once I start recruiting the right people to help me, it won't be a problem. 
It really Good. won't. Awesome. But I know I can do it. Awesome. Yeah. Well, it's just it's just having the structure in place and making sure that everything's lined up. I, and to me, it doesn't seem difficult. The challenge is the other stuff, the money aspect, which is something which was never an issue with with my Spanish group. Actually, it became an issue. You're going to laugh because I was I wasn't taking any money from anybody. I was I was paying for everything myself. And my friends said to me, you need to start getting something for this. And they Absolutely. insisted. Yeah. So it was the reverse. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. It's it's and you know, we are in a a freemium avalanche and a membership apocalypse right now. And uh, you know, totally you're not seeing it. anything any different. And um uh, you know, I I, I I quit doing free webinars, to be honest. And the reason I, oh yeah, really? I quit doing it. And, and I, and the reason I quit doing free webinars uh, was because I didn't feel um, that the participants of the webinar were getting everything out that they really wanted um, based off of the other participants of the webinar. Uh, they weren't as committed. Um, they weren't actionable. Hmm. Uh, and so uh, I started and I didn't start this myself. I actually took it off of net from from a mentor of mine. But I sat there. I was like, you know what? 20 bucks. It's an, it's a small investment, but it's an investment and it makes a huge amount of difference. So, uh, uh, you know, you coming up with uh, the issues for the financing. I'm glad that that one little tidbit comes off because hopefully that's going to help you. It's uh, yeah. If you don't know how to have it paid for and it's got to be paid for. Yeah. Yeah. You know, one thing you need to figure out, have you figured out ticket prices yourself? And, and no, I, I, you know, something I haven't even thought about it. And I'm really glad that uh, you reminded me of it because we're, um, no. And one of the hard costs I need to nail down is like, what's, what's it going to cost to do this hotel? I have to yeah. call them back and say, look, I need prices Absolutely. from you guys. And then there are all these people for these events and so on. Um, yeah, it's it's a really good point. Ticket prices and then sponsorship, this whole thing called return on investment, however that's going mm -hmm. to work. And one of the things that I want to do for this event is build something, uh, a digital school essentially, where some of the core courses that you don't actually need to teach in person could be digital and people can learn yep. it online. But the rest of the stuff, you know, will have yeah. to be live. Yeah. And... Like for me, I'm I'm really lucky. I learn stuff really fast. It, it, once you show it to me a few times, I, I get it and I, and I start producing. But I'm not like everybody else, or rather, everybody else is not yep. like me. But I'm just looking at this thing in multiple different tiers. And when I look at this thing, it's not just an event. It's not just um, a group. My it's I'm building a movement. Yeah. Okay, that's what I'm working on. With the idea that it starts. Here, December 14th, downtown Vancouver, and I'm going to check into other hotels. I'm really glad you mentioned that, but I'll check. And um, that's where it starts. And then there are a series of workshops, and then there's a break, another series of workshops, a break, another series on break. Because to try and cram them all together, I think I'll overload all the participants. Bad idea. So it's going to be more expensive, but better in the long run, because people can then, uh, what's the word, integrate what they're learning. Yep. Yep. Really yep. important. Consume it. Yeah, absolutely. I, and it, it, you know, we consume uh, in bite-sized chunks. You know, when you get, a, when you get a, yeah. if you eat steak, when you get a nice juicy steak, you don't take the steak, shove it in your mouth and eat. You cut the steak <laughs> up. No. And it's manageable bite-sized chunks. And that's exactly how, um, <clears throat> and the fact that you're doing some breakout sessions, that's really good. Um, when you say breakout sessions, what does that mean? Uh, well, uh, you know, so you can have, I, I, one of my favorite things to say is, you know, the difference between a community and an audience is the way the chairs are turned. And so an audience is, hmm. you know, there's a stage and, the, and all the chairs are facing the same way. A community uh, right. is, is think of a circle, you know, so all the chairs are in a circle. That's yeah. a community. And when people can feed off of each other, that's where real learning begins. That's why, you know, there's, a million Facebook groups out there. And most of them don't amount to anything because people don't engage and interact. It's not fostered. It's not nurtured in the group. Um, that this is a safe place for you to ask your questions. 
Um, you know, there are no dumb questions or stupid questions. We'll all, you know, everybody's been in your position at once in life or, you know, maybe, hey, you come up with something brand new and we do have to think. Um, so breakout sessions are simply where, you know, you have your person, uh, your your person on stage or uh, the keynote or, or whatever you want to call them. And and they do their part. But the entire time they're, they're up there, you, you kind of make plans for, uh, you know, OK, so let's take this and, and go into you know, breakout sessions, let's break down into groups or something or or have learning sessions where people can go to four different uh, things, you know, to uh, people are up on stage only for so long. So, you know, I'd really like to know more about um, how to have the right consistency batter for the perfect cupcake. Uh, and, I, you know, I know that there's a, a group talking about this after after this guy's talking or between three and four or whatever like that, I'm going to go there. So they may not be paying attention to who's on stage, but they're getting more value out of uh, whatever it is because they're able to participate and they're able to connect with others. And so that's what I'm saying is that, yeah. uh, you know, you're serving your community, you're serving your audience. And anytime you rob your community uh, of the ability for them to learn and grow in any type of way, uh, you're doing them and you a disservice and you're going to eventually filter out. Uh, you know, they're, they're, they're going to eventually figure out, I don't need you. Um, yeah. It's, it's a funny thing. This whole idea of this, this event thing, I, I could see it happening as a once a year thing, once, once it gets going, but in a different format, once yeah. it gets going, yeah, man, I have no idea. Although, I mean, the one thing that I do have are two solid fans out of Australia. And one of them uh, told me that his boss was, you know, he wants to watch me for a while to see because he said he's heard about so many people who said, I'm going to do this and they do it for a while and then it peters out. Oh, but yeah. in my case, it's like, nope. Yeah, we're here. Yeah, I, I know it can peter out. I'm well I, aware I, of it. I come from the, the uh, salespeople hear it all the time, um, especially in telecom which is a world that I'm very familiar with that I work in now. Uh, and, you know, you get somebody that comes along and they've got big dreams and aspirations and I'm going to do this. And, uh, you know, three months, six months, a year later, uh, you know, they're doing a buck, buck 50, $2 a month, uh, you know, if that, or they're, maybe they're not, you know, so we hear it all the time. Uh, it's actionable results. So the way to keep um, the, the person who's watching you, uh, is, is just kind of give him updates, you know, make sure that he's aware of the little steps that Absolutely. you're doing. And, and so for you, you know, again, leverage what you need to leverage, but make sure that you're, it's not that you don't have your big goals. We got to have the big goal. Just mm -hmm. make sure you've got the little goals, mm -hmm. the milestones, right. the, the achievements. Um, I got to figure those out. I, I realized now that I hadn't done that. And that's and... why if you, and that's where reverse goal planning comes into play. I'm here. Here's huh. the event. I've got this many people. I've got everything set up. That's what you need to picture. And you, and then you go, okay, how did I get here? And you got to put it down on paper. Um, I'm I'm a big fan of kinesthetic learning, which is pen to paper. Um, I, you know, things like Evernote and all that's great for recall. Um, but I, you know, whatever it is that you can use, you know, break it out. Start siphoning. Uh, you know, it's a funnel. And how did I, you yeah, know, how did, I, you know, case, how did yeah. it, we got to the point, all right, what are all the little steps that came into here? And what happens is you will inevitably find other steps that you didn't think about at first. And it's like, okay. And that's where the next time comes along. You go, Hey, Brian, how are you? Welcome. I haven't seen you a long time since Meerkat. Um, I don't know anything about Meerkat. I can't take advantage of it because I, uh, well, I don't have an iPhone. Uh, no, Meerkat works on Android, I thought. Maybe not. I think it does. Um, I was told it didn't, huh. so maybe... Well, I actually just got my Android tablet. It wouldn't be the first time I've got my wires crossed. Um, Mevi doesn't work on, but Meerkat's been around for a while, and I'm oh. pretty sure Meerkat does. Sorry, wrong yeah, platform. Okay. I was there's thinking... A, there's a ton out there. Uh, yeah, Mevi's brand new, and it doesn't work on it. Um, and, and There's, says there's another one you might... On Android. There's another one you might want to check out, Meerkat. Yeah, there's um, a peer dot in. I, yeah, I've that seen out? that. Um, that's it's useful. 
Um, but I would use that more for like if I was doing some kind of one on one or tech support or something of that nature. It's kind of like a Zoom or yeah. or something of that nature. And like I say, they're all live video. They're all great platforms. Um, yeah, but they're not they're not a meerkat type thing or or a periscope or a blab or anything like. And blabs in its own little space. Blab is not going anywhere. I can tell you that. Um, but I tell you what, we're coming up on the top of the hour, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop this recording real quick. So anyway, I want to thank oh, okay, I cool. want to thank Nathan uh, for joining me in here. He's had some great insight and great input. Everybody else that's joined and commented on the side, thanks very much. If you're watching the replay again, the hashtag NWWN Talk. Put that out there if you've got any questions. I will be happy to respond to you. My name is David Vaughn. Thanks a lot, and tune in for the next episode soon.